Never did I think it would already be possible for AI to create actually good YouTube thumbnails, but here we are. Today I built a thumbnail designer AI agent and it is unreal. All of the thumbnails are crazy good because the agent uses an entire database filled with proven viral templates to guarantee we get the best results. First I'll show you exactly how the agent works and then go over how to set it up so you can start using it right away. You can find all of the resources as well as the free downloadable template inside my free school community linked in the description. Okay so here is the agent and let me first actually explain how it works. I made an entire Google Drive folder which is like a database filled with a bunch of already viral thumbnails. And basically we will store all of these thumbnails inside a RAG database and if you don't know what that is I explain it in detail in this video that will pop up right now. But just think of it like a big database of files that the AI can access. And then what we're also going to do is give the AI a picture of ourselves so that for example this guy is not in our thumbnail but it is actually us. And no this will not copy the actual thumbnail, it will just get inspired by the style and make our own version of it. So let's actually see how this works. I'm going to open chat, so here you'll say how you want your thumbnail to look like, the main idea and all those other things. I already prepared a prompt just for the sake of testing and the idea I'm going for with this example is I built a 5 million dollar AI app in 22 minutes. So we want the AI to create a thumbnail for a YouTube video with this title and then I just gave him some extra instructions on how to do that. I also want to include my face in the thumbnail so I'm going to give it a picture of myself. For testing I'll just put in my profile picture and let's run this and see what happens. So right now a relevant thumbnail from our database got pulled back and this is where we actually get the prompt for our image generation. So this is the main part of the workflow. Okay now that this finished we got our image URL over here which I can simply copy, bring over to the Google search bar and here we have our thumbnail. I personally think it looks really good for just AI but of course it could be a bit better although for our first attempt I would say this is very very impressive. When you just look at the details like this glow behind me it's completely AI generated and all this text on the phone looks super clean without really any blurriness. Of course if I were to test this a few more times I would very soon get exactly what I'm looking for. And just to prove to you that this is not real copying let me show you the actual thumbnail that got pulled back from our database. And here is the thumbnail. Now looking at these side to side they do look somewhat similar but keep in mind that top YouTubers do this all the time. Of course this is not in the right landscape format so I just need to change this in the prompt but looking at it overall I would say that this was a very successful first test. So now let's actually see how to build this agent. Okay but before we actually build this agent we first need to make another workflow in which we will basically store all of our thumbnails from our database inside this rag vector store for our actual agent to be able to pull back. So this workflow starts off with a manual trigger and then we grab a Google Drive node in which we search files and folders. Here you just need to scroll down to this folder parameter and for the list choose the name of your folder with your thumbnails. After we run this you will see that over here we get all of our images from that folder. But we cannot use any of these images right now because we first need to download them all into our workflow. For that you would normally do another Google Drive node but this time selecting download file option but since we have in this case 10 items that we want to download we first need to add a loop over items node and then put the download file node inside the loop so that it downloads all of our items. And you will see that for the output we get all of our files back turned into binary. Now in this next part of the workflow we will basically enable all of our images to be stored in into our database and the actual best way I found to do this for free is to turn these images into multiple text descriptions using a analyze image AI node. Essentially right now it is not possible to store our binary files into a rag vector store for free 
So I found the next best way to do this, which is to accurately describe each image using AI that we can then actually store inside the vector database. So to start this off, we are of course using a loop over items nodes to process each item individually. But to actually be able to analyze all of our images using AI, we need to turn this binary data into an actual public URL for which we will use this HTTP request node. Now the service I'm using is called cloudinary.com and I decided to use this because it's free for everyone and very easy to set up. So you would just sign up for free. You'll first need to set up your actual API key, but I'm not going to go over that right now because I already made a bunch of videos showing how to do that step by step and they will all be linked in the description if you want to check them out. But to actually get this URL back in Cloudinary you would click on docs, go to upload API and over here you will find this post URL which you can simply copy and paste into here as well as switch the method to post. Then we need to send some body parameters and the first one is going to be a form data type. For the name you would just put in upload preset but for the actual value you would need to go back to Cloudinary, click on your settings and select upload. Here you can create as many upload presets as you want and basically however you name it over here, let's say I name it YouTube demo and save, that's how you would also name it inside NA10. So YouTube demo. Then we just need to send another body parameter and in this case it's going to be a NA10 binary file type. For the name just name it file and for the input data field name it's important that it's called exactly the same as your binary file. Okay so that's actually the entire setup and we can send it off to the Google Gemini analyze image node in which for the actual URL over here just drag and drop the URL output that you get from your previous note. As for the prompt you can find it in my free school community as well as all the other resources but we are basically telling it to get the general concept, idea, style from the actual image. After that finishes running I use the set node to get both the image URL and the thumbnail description because we want to be able to store it both inside our vector database. So for the image URL I just drag and dropped the URL from our previous HTTP request node and as for the thumbnail description I just drag and dropped the content we got from our AI analyzer node. Then I just connected this back to our loop over items node and that's where we then get all of our items back. Now this next set node that I added is not really necessary, it's basically the same set node we have over here but I just thought it would be cleaner and easier for me to operate if I added this again. The same goes for this code node so you don't actually need this but it will make your text that right now includes these objects and arrays cleaned up and turned into something that actually looks like a normal English text. Again if you don't actually know how to code you can find all of this inside my free school community. Now all there's left to do is to store this inside the rag vector store for which I'm using pinecone. Now once you log into pinecone for free you would just click on create new index, name it however you want. You would need to choose an embedding and I just recommend you go with the text embedding tree small. I always change the dimension to 1536 and that's it leave everything else as is just click on create index. And there we go, we have our new index set up. So back in NA10, you would choose your index from the list over here. I named it demo, so that's what I'm going with. And for the options, just add a pinecone namespace and give it whatever name you want. After, you'll just need to attach an embedding and just choose OpenAI's text embedding tree small. Lastly, you'll need to add a document data loader. And this is how we will actually store both our image URL and thumbnail description inside the database. So your node will look something like this with this add option button which you will click and select add metadata. You would add two properties. One would of course be the image URL and the other would be the thumbnail description. 
and then for the value you would just go to mapping for the image url drag and drop the image url and for the thumbnail description the actual thumbnail descriptions so that's the whole setup and now let's get into building the actual ai agent so this workflow starts off with a on chat message trigger but you also need to add another field called allow file uploads that way we can upload all of the images we want included in the thumbnail so again we will get the response in binary and we need to turn it into an actual public url which we are going to do with another cloudinary http request and now we can actually do a trick to save a bunch of time and that is to go to our previous workflow where we already have this exact node set up and simply click Control c on your keyboard and inside our other workflow click Control v and we have the exact node already set up just make sure though that your data input field name is called the same as your binary data now we have our first ai agent node and this agent's job is to basically analyze all of the context that we provided to him inside our chat trigger node and then use that to pull back the most relevant thumbnail from our pinecone database that we gave to him as a tool. So you would just add a pinecone vector store tool to your AI agent and for the exact prompt and instructions you can find it as well as all of the other ones inside my free school community. When we run this agent you will see that this output text contains this hidden image URL and that's actually the exact URL we put inside the pinecone database using our metadata but right now we can't actually do anything with this because this is not dynamic it's not a value for itself so what we'll need to do is grab a information extractor AI node for the text drag and drop the agents output and basically just add an attribute to extract so I just said extract the image URL from the text you'll also need to attach a LLM model to this and because this is a very easy job I suggest you go with one of the cheapest models but anyway you'll notice that for our output we get the image URL back as a dynamic variable okay so now we get to the main agent of our workflow this agent will basically use these tools to analyze both the actual thumbnail that got pulled back from the vector store and the image we uploaded at the start what its main job is is to then take both of those images and find a way to prompt a image generation model in a way that combines them both into one thumbnail which will then later create a thumbnail using the images I provided but following the already clean and viral thumbnail style we got from our thumbnail that got pulled back. Again, both the user and system prompt are inside my free school community but let's actually see what tools this agent uses so you will notice that there is no native analyze image tools for our ai agent like if i type in google gemini we can see that the only operation available is a message a model and a custom api call so what we'll need to use instead is a call another na10 workflow tool and that is what both of these tools actually are this is how the actual sub workflow looks and you can see that it's very very simple basically just three nodes we have a when executed by another workflow trigger then a set node to get all of the information nicely structured and the actual Gemini analyze image node that we can't get as a native tool for our agent in this workflow and essentially we have two of these workflows one that analyzes the actual thumbnails and the other that analyzes our input image so to kind of go over how to set this up for the trigger just choose the fun using JSON below and then in the actual JSON you can put whatever you want but I decided to give it the image URL of course the prompt that our agent is going to pass on to it and the user context which is basically what we wrote as our input message over here again the set node you don't really need but I just like to always have it to keep things clean and then we pass on the image URL to our analyze image node as well as in the prompt give it our user context and tell it exactly how to analyze our image back in our agent tool you'll need to select however you named the workflow here and since this is the thumbnail analyzer tool you would just drag and drop the thumbnail url we got from our information extractor node the prompt you just want to define it automatically using ai so to do that you would simply click this button and for the user context just 
put in the message from our chat trigger node. You would then do the exact same thing for our image analysis tool, but this time for the URL, you would drag and drop the image URL from our Cloudinary HTTP request. Now you should have everything nicely set up and your agent should return this detailed image generation prompt. So actually the only thing left to do would be to send this off to our image generation model, which of course is going to be Google's Nano Banana because it's miles better better than any other model right now. For this, I'm using a service called File AI, and this is basically a all-in-one service for all of these image and video generation models, which is perfect for this case. Once you log in, you'll need to throw in a few bucks to actually run this service, but it's really not that expensive. Like one nano banana image costs about four cents, which is well worth it for what you're getting in my opinion. But once you're in, you will need to click on the search bar and, and search for nano banana. Select this first option, go to API, select this to be HTTP curl. Here you'll see this curl command with all of these parameters already set up for you. You just need to set up your authorization exactly like it's shown over here. So you'd need to type in key and then paste in your API key. You would of course do that once you copy this and bring it back to NA10 and inside your HTTP request, select import curl and paste it into here. I already have this set up, so I'll just show you what to send off in the body request. So first you'd select to send off the parameters using fields below, not using JSON. And then you would send off two parameters, the prompt and the image URLs. For the prompt, you can just drag and drop the output you got from the agent. But for the image URLs, you need to go back to the information extractor node for our thumbnail URL, drag and drop that in here, then add a comma and drag and drop the other URL of the actual image we provided. Once you send this request off, you will see the output that looks something like this. And this request usually takes about 10 to 15 seconds to execute. So you just need to add a wait node of about 15 seconds. And once that's done, we just need to actually get the image URL for which we use another HTTP request node but this time the method is get. You'll need to set up your API authorization and for this URL we can simply go back to file AI and if we click on get the result you will see this exact URL we can simply copy and bring back to NA10 and now just instead of this request ID we need to drag and drop our request ID and that's it. Here Here's the URL which you can simply copy and paste into Google and you'll get your thumbnail. So you see that AI is quickly starting to take over everything and the ones that don't start learning it right now will get left behind. So subscribe to the channel to never miss a new tutorial. But if you want to learn as fast as possible, the best shortcut is connecting with like-minded people that have the same mindset and goals as you do. And that's exactly what you'll find in my free school community. So join in because there's literally no reason not to. Have a great rest of the day and see you in the next one.